Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, President of Tompkins Conservation and UN Patron of Protected Areas, Christine Tompkins. <laughs> I am very happy tonight to be president and, uh, president and honoring President Piñera and his lovely wife and friend, Cecilia. Suppose it was perfectly certain that the life and fortune of every one of us would, one day or another, depend upon our winning or losing a game of chess. Don't you think that we should all consider it to be a primary duty to learn at least the names and the moves of the pieces? And that's why I'm here tonight. It's very plain and an elementary truth that the life, the fortune, and the happiness of every one of us and those who are connected with us depends upon our knowing something of the rules of the game infinitely more difficult and complicated than chess. It is a game which has been played out for untold ages. The chessboard is the world. The pieces are the phenomena of the universe. And the rules of the game are what we call the laws of nature. Thomas Huxley, 1868. My late husband Douglas and I have been working in Chile for over 25 years and donating large tracts of land toward the creation of national parks. President Sebastián Piñera has played a key role in this effort, which in the last few years oversaw the creation of five new national parks and the enlargement of three others, totaling just over 12 million acres. Chile has stepped forward with one of the highest percentages of land conservation in the world. It's not the largest country, nor is it the richest country, but it has shown that it is possible and become a world leader to conserve key habitat while also minding the store of its economy. It has also declared wildly large marine conservation areas and the government of President Piñera has announced the decarbonization of the energy matrix before the middle of this century. Chile's also, as most of you know, the host for COP in December, and uh, everybody involved in Chile is very, very happy about that. These actions are worthy of the recognition of acknowledging that, that there is so much to be done. This recognition of President Piñera invites us to think, what else can we do to face the crisis we face? What must we stop doing to face the crisis we face? Science and our common sense tell us what the rules of the high stakes game of climate change are, and we are clear on what needs to be done to change the end of this story. Still in all, we are left wringing our hands, wanting to act, but not willing to lead where it is necessary hesitating to risk losing the comforts and economies of all of our modern lives. It's our job to listen to what the scientists have been saying for decades, and for once come to agreement that the lack of action on the part of all of us is becoming and has become a moral issue. We're at the 11th hour and everybody knows it. We know the rules of this chess game. Our actions need to reflect our personal ethics and we will all be judged by our actions long after we're gone and rightfully so. For me personally, the time has come to change our limited concept of peace, commonly considered, measured, and celebrated by solely human interaction. Let us widen our recognition of peace to include the ethic that all life has intrinsic value and may we measure ourselves rather by peace between the human and the non-human world. 
It is with this sentiment I ask President Piñera to join me here to receive this recognition, which represents both tremendous opportunity and the responsibility for Chile and the whole planet. Congratulations, Sebastián. Good evening to everyone. Let me thank, first of all, Fred Kemp and John Rogers for this award and for this opportunity to share with you some reflections and some thoughts about our fight against climate change and global warming. Thank you, Christine, for your kind words and warm welcome. You have given Chile a real treasure, and we will take care of it, because we understand that this is a moral issue. And at the same time, we have a common cause with Christine, and a real strategic alliance with a strong sense of environmental protection. It's a great privilege and a great honor to receive this award because this award has a very sp special meaning. Each generation has its own challenges, but no generation has had such an urgent and formidable challenge as climate change and global warming as our generation. This is the battle of our lives. The human being is the smartest creature on Earth, but at the same time is the only creature that is able and sometimes willing to destroy our planet Earth, our only planet Earth. That's why political leadership is about doing what is right for your people, for your country, for the world. Even when it is unpopular or when you have to face great difficulties. And today we are facing great difficulties. First of all, the two superpowers that should be joining forces to lead us to win this battle are engaged in a too long and too harmful tariff war. We are seeing acts of terrorism in the Middle East and at the same time massive migration in many areas of the, of the world, including South America, due to the incompetent and corrupt dictatorship of Maduro in Venezuela. But these difficulties and division cannot prevent us from acting together to face the formidable threats to mankind that we will have to face. Leadership is about balancing the competing interests of different groups. But sometimes those different interests come together. And this is the case and the urgency and the need to fight climate change and global warming. Many prestigious magazines have published pictures of planet Earth with headlines saying, let's save planet Earth. I believe they are totally wrong. Planet Earth has existed for more than 4.3 million years. And during that long time and period, it has faced and survived all kinds of threats glaciation, heats, volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, tsunamis, hurricanes, collision with aerolites, deluge, floods, you name it. What is really at risk is not our planet, but the survival of human beings on our planet Earth. We have to remember that 99 out of 100 species that ever existed do not longer exist. And of course, 
We don't want to add the human race to that sad list. Some people are skeptical about climate change and global warming, but we know too much to remain skeptical. The scientific evidence, and tomorrow we will know the main results of a report, United for Science, that will tell us things like the last five years has been the hottest five years in the history of mankind. That today we have this long, largest concentration of greenhouse gases and the highest temperature in the, hist in the known history of mankind. Therefore, we need to act now. This is not a matter of opinion, politics, ideology, or faith. It's a matter of science. What can we do? We have two options. One, wait and see and face the consequences. Second, act now and face this challenge and change the history and avoid a strategy. Of course, Chile and many countries have chosen the second option. That's why we accepted to host the next COP summit meeting that will take place in Santiago, Chile in December of this year. That's why we have committed ourselves to become a carbon neutral country. That means zero net emission before 2050. What we're doing to achieve that? We have put a plan in, into action that is already moving with four basic pillars. First, total decarbonization of our energy matrix and replace coal as a source of energy by the energy of, of the wind, the solar energy, the land energy, the energy of the oceans. Second, we are transforming our public transportation system from a system based on, on fossil fuels to a system based on electromobility. Third, we're establishing very high standards of energy efficiency in all sectors of our society. And finally, we are engaged in a very ambitious reforestation program to take advantage of the capacity of Chile to host forest, rainforest, and many other kinds of forests. We are... <laughs> Chile was a poor country in terms of the old fossil fuels, but we're extremely rich in terms of the new renewal and clean energies of the future. The energy of the sun in a country that has the deserts with the highest radiation of the world. The energy of the wind in a country that has more than 5,000 kilometers close to the Andean Mountains. The energy of the sea with more than 6,000 kilometers of coastal line. And the energy of the land in a country that has more than 20% of the active volcanoes of the world. Chile was one of the first countries in the world to ban plastic bags. Because one plastic bag takes less than one second to be produced. It's used on average not more than 15 minutes. And it takes 400 years to biodegrade. That means 400 years contaminating our land and our ocean. But we have to be aware because we are still moving in a direction that very close and very soon there will be more plastic bags than fish in our oceans. We are leaving behind the old disposable culture and replacing it by a new recyclable culture with much less waste. We are shifting from a linear economy to a circular economy who also who reuses its waste and therefore is much more ecological. To protect our nature, our biodiversity and our planet is not only an environmental obligation, it's a moral obligation. We have that obligation with ourselves, our children, our grandchildren, and those that will come, who had, of course, a right to inherit it, a better world than the one that we received from our parents. We are the first generation to suffer the consequence of global warming and climate change, but we are the last generation that can do something to change the course of history and avoid the tragedy. That's why our call is for action. The time has come for action. And therefore, from the very south of the world, 
and from the confines of the world, Chile makes a call to all nations and all people of good faith to join forces to win this crucial war. The time is now. The time for action has come. Let's move. Thank you very much.